Good morning, my stitchy friends. Are you ready for a March update and some product reviews? If so, grab your favorite drink, pull up a chair, get your stitching, and join me. Oh, good morning, everybody. Did you grab your favorite drink? Did you grab your stitching? Hopefully this won't be too long, but we'll give it a shot and see how it goes. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me in your home today and sharing your precious time with me. And I want to welcome all my returning viewers and say thank you so, so much for hanging out with me. I really, really appreciate every each and every one of you. And for those of you that are new here, thanks for stopping by. I hope you see something that you like and will continue to come back. So let's get on with the stitching. What have I been working on this week? Well, actually, since the 1st of March. Um, I have some notes here, so you're going to see me looking down quite often so that I can give you the details of what I've been working on. So let's see. First up is the Home Sweet Home Stitch Along by By the Bay Needle Arts. Ah, oh, this started in November. <laughs> I am so seriously behind. However, I have worked on it this, this month a little bit. Uh, I am stitching it on 40 count Mallow by Zweigert. Uh, it looks like very much like a natural linen. It's a like a oat colored linen. And I was going to say I completed finally the first block. Whoops, I always do this the wrong way. I completed the first block. However, as I looked at it this morning, I didn't complete the first block. Do you see what I missed? I missed putting the fence rails on the fence <laughs> so i have to go back and put that on and then that first block finally will be finished this is not one that i pick up on a regular basis i pick it up you know maybe maybe once a week maybe once every other week but it is a rather fun and enjoyable enjoyable stitch I actually did work on it for four days this month, and I did 1,345 stitches. So I think when you saw this last, I only had this half almost complete. So I really did finish the whole rest of the block, except for these long stitches that will make up the fence. And I worked on this border that I'm going to stitch as I go. So, this is Home Sweet Home Stitch Along by By the Bay Needle Arts. Okay, that was number one. Number two, I stitched on Pandemic. And when I, March the 1st, I was at 25% complete. Oh, there's a string here. Let's get that out of the way. And as of today, I am 29.5% complete. And I have worked mainly on this side. And I did worked on it for 
13 days, I did 3,595 stitches on this. Yeah, and I did say I worked on it 13 days. I was at 25% when I started and 29.5% today. And I normally will work on this in the evening because it's more of a relaxing stitch and I can do it watching TV. And I really just love the white thread that's B5200 on Victorian Red Lugana 25 count. And I do just love it. Love, love, love it. So that one got its share of love in the last, well, I think it's only been about three weeks since I did a did an update video. So that's pandemic. I'd like to be a lot further, but we know how it goes because my prior this is one of my focus ones because I work on it in the evening. But my big focus piece is, can you guess? Do you know? Sure you do. Sure you do. My main focus piece is Sir Frederick Frosty by Heaven and Earth Designs. It is a Christmas stocking. Oh, golly, I'll never get this right. Let me, let me do this. There we go. It is a Christmas stocking that I am making for my daughter. Sir Frederick was at 23% on March the 1st. I did 5,368 stitches on it this month. And I worked on it for 16 days so far. And it is now 30.8% one nine percent complete so i'm just about a third of the way if i get just this one done this year and do my son-in-law's next year i will be happy if i get this one done and a start on my son-in-law's i will be happy so over here oops over here we see that light is starting to come in I'm stitching this on 20 count eight o'clock and I'm stitching it on the diagonal. And what I'm doing is doing cross country within the diagonal. Now I don't stick 100% to that diagonal. If I have just a couple stitches in the next one, I will stitch that. Or if I don't have that much thread left, I will finish off the thread but I am really loving the way this is turning out and it is so neat to see his eyes are there his nose is almost finished his carrot nose so this one is a this one is a lot of fun to stitch and I really really am enjoying stitching on it so that is Sir Frederick Frosty by Heaven and Earth Designs and to be honest I forget the designer can't remember. Old brain. <laughs> and just for kicks and giggles and something different, I picked up one that I had started. Oh, I think it was actually last year sometime. I know how I had done a video when I started it and I don't re I should have looked and I don't remember which one it was. But I picked up English Garden by Dominique Davidson and I actually finished a diagonal on it and well I I filled in the diagonals to make it even and this space here was left because that area on this diagonal has a lot of that color on the next one. So I threw a couple stitches in it just again because it was easy stitching. 
it's only I think about three colors in the sky and I just I just needed something different for a little bit so I picked this up to work on this so for those of you who like numbers <laughs> And this year I am about the numbers and I just, just for my own curiosity, like to see, you know, how much, how much did I stitch in a month? What my total is so far for the year. Um, I am in some group, well, I'm in the survival of the stitchiest and we count stitches. So it just gave me that curiosity to see just how much am I stitching? And I've been keeping, been better about keeping records of my stitch counts because we all know Pattern Maker makes that really easy to do. So this month I stitched a total of 10,308 stitches. So that's just this month. My stitches grand total year to date is 32,011 stitches. Now, I do have them divided out between full coverage. Let me find my book here. Full coverage and not full coverage. So let me see where we're. I didn't write those down, but I have them here in my handy dandy little happy planner. <laughs> so my full coverage stitches this year so far we're 17,772. Now that's year to date from January 1st until I didn't add in yesterday. So that is until Tuesday the 22nd. And my non-full coverage, which is pandemic and um, the Home Sweet Home Stitch Along, come to 14,239 since January 1st. So that gives me 32,011 stitches so far this year. I think it's kind of fun just to see, just to see the numbers and see, you know, not that it's, not that it's a race or a competition. I think it's just something of interest and something to see, wow, just how much do I do? Or how much don't I do? Not to compare to anybody else. Everybody's an individual. Everybody does their own thing. And that is as it should be. So that's not to say, oh, I'm a really fast stitcher or I'm a really bad stitcher or to make anybody else feel the same way. Not at all. It's just information. And that's it. How you stitch, what you stitch, how much you stitch is all about you and what makes you happy, which is always what I say. <laughs> we all know that I'm all about doing what pleases you. You know, there was a conversation I, I was reading on, I think it was Facebook and, and it was, it was talking about the back of your work and I could have gone on my soapbox, but I chose not to. But I was just thinking, you know, again, it's all about what makes that person happy. If they are happy and they are satisfied with how they are doing their stitching, who are we to criticize? Who are we? What gives us the right to criticize. If somebody asks me for advice and say, you know, how is this? Can I make this better? How can I make this better? Sure. Then you do it in a, in a very constructive and kind way. But other than that, whatever people love and whatever people are satisfied it's their thing, it's their stitching, it's their joy. So I'll get off my soapbox about that. Now, you probably saw on the opening of this video that I'm going to do some product review today. And I will start off with 
a BenQ desk lamp. I was contacted by BenQ to evaluate their lamp and to give you my honest opinion. And I know there are several other floss tubers out there who were asked to do the same thing. So let's have a look at the BenQ desk lamp because I'm going to say I love it. <laughs> I got it just a few days ago. Now I'm going to turn it off so it's going to get dark in here because I'm actually using it to light up in here a little bit because even with my lights on it's a gloomy yucky day today so let's put this down this is the lamp it comes on an extremely sturdy base and this is very heavy so that no matter what position <clears throat> pardon me, what position you put this light in, this is not going to tip over. Not at all. So it is heavy. And you do need to, it, it, they will tell you, you do need to hold it. You can't carry it around just by holding this. You need to hold the base if you're going to move it. Okay, so that's no big deal. No big deal. Okay, so it is very sturdy. It is very heavy. If you notice, I really have to hold it with two hands. It's, it's too heavy for me to hold with just one hand. Okay, so I'm going to set it down here on the table now that you've seen the base. The most important part is the top here. It's bowed, which, which I like. The thing I love is you don't have to fumble for a switch to turn it on and off. You just, I'm going to move it down a little bit so you can see. You just hit this and it turns on. Okay. Wonderful. Turn it off just by hitting it. Just, well, not hitting it. Just lightly tap it. It turns off and on. This switch here adjusts the light so you can make it brighter or you can dim it. And if you press this button, it will change from a yellowish light, and it's hard for you to see that on this video, but it will change from a yellowish light to a bright light. So you can make this then as bright as I mean, I can really kind of wash myself out. <laughs> it, I can make it so bright. Um, but that is a really nice feature. But the thing I really like about this is the ability to position it in a position that works the best for you. So this bar here, this upright bar. Now, this is straight up, and this is as far as it goes when it's straight up. However, I'm going to move it this way a bit so that you can get the full view you can do this and you can probably take it down to about that angle so depending on where you're sitting and how you're sitting you can really get it close to you and then this just comes up and look how far that's stretched out. That is really stretched out. And this in no way is tipping over. And this is how I have it setting on that, oop, that table that's next to my stitching chair. I have it pretty much in this position so that I can see the stitch and I can adjust the light to whatever intensity I need it to see what I'm stitching. And I will say, if I am stitching on the finer 40 count fabric, even I do still do put in on my second pair of eyes. <laughs> but I can see the stitches and see the holes much better 
with this light. It's a fabulous light. I love it. And I can't thank Ben Q enough for sending it to me to review. I was really surprised when I uh, got the email of them contacting me. I was really surprised, but I was thrilled, absolutely thrilled. And when it came, I was so excited. I couldn't wait to open it up and to try it and see, to see what it was like. I love it, absolutely love it. So I do hope that those of you who are interested in it will love it just as much as I do. And you guys know, you know what I'm all about. And I am not going to recommend a product to you that I do not like. I have to like it in order to present it to you folks to say, hey, you might want to give it a try. You might want to give it a try. You can purchase it on Amazon. Um, you can purchase it. There's another place. Hold on. On the BenQ website, you can purchase on Amazon. And there's also, um, it's also listed on Twitter. And I don't do Twitter, so I don't know if that's just a account that tells you about it or exactly what that all is about. Because I don't do Twitter. Sorry. <laughs> but you can find it on their website and on Amazon. And I will post the links in the drop down box. So if this is something you would be interested in, give it a look, give it a look. I love it. Again, I'm not gonna recommend something to you that I do not love. And I was super, super excited when I got it and opened it up. It is a little bit, you do have to put it together. The base and this part are already together. What you have to do is take this piece that the light is on and drop it down into this long upright and then there's two little screws that get screwed in and you get the screws and you get a little um, allen wrench <laughs> I'm not mechanically inclined. I made my husband put it together, to be honest with you. Um, and he did. And then you just, uh, turn it this way. You just slip the cord into this notch here, and you are good to go. So check it out. See how you like it. I love it. I am so, so grateful to Ben Q for thinking of me and sending it to me to review. And I have nothing bad to say, nothing bad whatsoever. So you might want to check it out. Okay. So that's the light. Oops. Here we go. Put that back over here. There we go. Put it back up so I have some more. Like I said, I'm using it as a backlight because it's so dark in here today. <laughs> okay. Now, the other product I have to show to you today, I found on Etsy. Um, again, you know me. I'm always looking for different things and floss organization and come on give me some light here there we go i keep turning it the wrong way there we go uh different ways to organize my floss and you know does something work better than something else and i came across an Etsy shop called Floss Anthro Anthrology. And I ordered these and they came last week. Now, 
let me say, a lot of people use thread drops. And I tried thread drops. However, what happened with thread drops for me, for me, a lot of people love them. I know people are doing those uh, exchanges with thread drops. And, you know, that is fine and wonderful. And they're collecting them and all of that. But what happens for me is those lengths of thread get so tangled up. When I pull one thread out of that bundle and even running my fingers through it and what have you, it, it just gets, I can't keep them from tangling. But I like the idea. I like the idea. So I don't know what made me peruse Etsy one day and I was looking at different, I searched for different floss system, embroidery floss organizer systems. And I came across these. They are called floss books and sticker tags. And they are by Floss Anthology. Okay. So you cut your thread. Now this is the short pages. So, uh, you can also get long pages so that this one your thread is cut in 50 centimeter lengths and folded in half so this length here is 25 centimeters you can get it that you've cut it in a hundred centimeters length so then there is another page that is attached here and when the floss is in there, it folds up, okay? But I really like this because I can put my floss in here. I can use it like a floss drop, but it's not going to get tangled because they don't interact with each other. They're each in their own little, um, their own little tube, so to speak. I guess that's what you call it. Here's a page that's pretty empty, and that's how they come. Okay, now these things here are how you get your floss into each channel. Now, I didn't, I didn't undo a skein, but I have some here. So I have a, a piece of unused, unstitched floss here. So maybe I need to switch my camera for a second. Or let's just, cameras, where are you? Oh, yeah, it's turned on. Here we go. Okay. Let's show you how you put it in. So when you want to insert, get it in the right, there, let's make this a little bigger so you can see. Oh, oh there we go. <laughs> so when you want to put your floss in, now this would be your whole, your whole skein of floss or however much you wanted to put in. And this is my thread for um, Sir Frederick Frosty. But what you do is this plastic, I call it a threader, threader, you would just loop your floss over that, over the end, okay, bend this up, I get it started underneath the plastic, and then you just Okay, didn't get it started enough. Hold on. Sometimes you, there are a couple times where I had to like, kind of, there we go. Play with it a little bit. And then you just pull it through. 
okay? So you would pull it through till it gets up to about, about here. And then you would put the sticker, you would put the sticker on it, put the sticker up in this little area, and there you have it. So they're all here, so that when you want to, to um, when you need that color, you just do like you do on a floss drop. You would just use your needle, pull out one strand of floss. Now, what I found to keep this from bunching up is when I pull the strand of floss, I kind of put my finger on the rest, and then I use my needle, pick up one strand, hold this so that it doesn't tend to want to pull the rest up. And that's more important when you get down to having less and less thread in each channel. But that will keep it from riding up, and then you just pull your, th your thread out and merrily along. Now, here's what else I found. My thread, okay, I'm going to switch back to me now. Okay, where am I here? There we go. My thread was on bobbins. And to be honest, I just was not real thrilled with the way your thread kinks when it's on the bobbins. I just wasn't liking that. I think it makes your thread not more. And yes, I would run it through a damp sponge in order to get those kinks out. What I found with this is once I had it had the thread in here and all my color this is all my colors for Sir Frederick Frosty. Now you can because it does have uh, holes in it, you can put these in a small notebook. I also cut a piece of it's a piece of plastic off of a a notebook cover. <laughs> but this is measured to the length of the channel so that I wrap the thread around this, cut it in half, it's already folded in half, pull it through, stick the sticker on. And you can put these in a notebook. I did not do that yet. Um, I wanted to find just a very thin um, binder to, to put them in. But what I found is my thread that was all crinkly from being on bobbins, once it was in here for a day or so, I would pull it out and those kinks were not there anymore. Which I found rather surprising, rather surprising, but rather pleased with that. So, I highly, highly recommend these because, it, again, it's like a floss drop, keeps your floss from getting tangled. The other thing is when you buy, this was the starter set and I did get two extra pages in addition to the starter set because I needed that many channels for all my colors. You also get the sticker tags. Now with these starter sets, they're blank and you have to write the numbers on yourself. However, if you look at the website and speaking with, and I was speaking with Sha Shauna, I think that's how you pronounce her name, she will print your color numbers for you. So you can order separately sticker tags with your color numbers pre-printed. All you have to do is send her a list of the colors or refer her to the chart that you're doing. Say, I know Heaven and Earth Designs already has floss usage, usage charts posted on when you pull up that design, you can get, you can view the floss usage if you click on the link at the bottom. So you would just have to refer her to what design you're doing the designer so that she gets the right one 
and she can go in, she will go in there, get the color numbers and print you the tags. Now, even if say, because these tags are not, re, it's, I don't know how you would reuse them. So say you needed five skeins of 159, she would print five stickers so that you had them when you wanted to insert your next skein into this. Because you're not going to put five skeins in here at one time. They're not going to fit. One skein fits very, very nicely. So she will print the stickers for you. If you choose, she will also print the sticker with the number and the symbol, which is awesome. It is fabulous. So that, you know, Pattern Keeper, that kind of tells you that automatically, but not everybody uses Pattern Keeper. Many people still use paper charts or they'll use another thing like GoodReader or GoodNotes or Exodeo or another application where they're not necessarily getting the number of what that symbol is. So she would put on the symbol and the DMC number or if you were using a fancy floss. She, I think, will also do those specialty threads or fancy flosses. She would also put those on stickers for you. Now, I don't know about you, but I know for me, that's an awesome time saver. An awesome time saver. Yes, maybe it only takes a minute to write that floss number on here. However, that's a minute less time you have to stitch. And we're, when you're doing 89 colors, that adds up. That's a fair amount of time that you could just be putting the sticker tag on and moving merrily along. But I love these. I found them so very nice. And they're, I mean, it's, it's not very bulky. It's easy to carry with you. Again, I like my stitching to be pretty portable because I stitch over here in my porch as well as taking it to the living room in the evening. So if I'm going to work on Frosty in the evening while I'm watching TV, I want something that's easy to carry with me. And this is extremely portable. And I stuck this on here because if I have to add thread to any one of these, I have my piece right here to be able to do that. In fact, I like these so much, I ordered another set, another starter set and two more pages so that I can put, I'm, I'm undecided. Do I want to put Adam's stocking in them or, or, I'm thinking I'm not going to start Adam's stocking until Jen's is done, until Frosty is done. However, I may put in the library in here and pull that puppy back out again because that has been so neglected and it needs some love. And that is one that I really, really, really want finished at some point in time. <laughs> we all know how that goes. We all know how that goes. So I highly recommend these. Again, they're on Etsy. The shop is Floss Anthrology. Shauna is a dear, dear person. She was so pleasant to talk to. Um, we were messaging back and forth for a while last evening. She seems like such a lovely person. Uh, so again, I, hi I highly would recommend her. And seriously, these tags are awesome. They are fabulous. And even if you didn't want to get all the pages, here's a thought for you folks, that even if you're going to keep your floss drops, why not order the tags, the sticker tags, to put on your floss drop and save yourself 
from having to write all those numbers and symbols. I'm sure, I'm sure she would make you sticker tags. So just order sticker tags. Okay. So again, up to you. It's a product that I found that I really liked. And I'm not going to recommend something to you that I don't like. We all know that. You all know that. So, I mean, I was, and you can see it setting right there. That is my full set of DMC in floss bags. And I was going to work just from that full set. However, did I want to drag that back and forth between over here and my living room? Probably not. Probably not. I'm not thinking I did. It's very heavy. Even though, I mean, it's just floss. And it's in a... Um, 20 by 20 ottoman tray is what I have it all in. And I had to put, um, I used mounting boards that I had extra of and um, knew I wasn't going to use them because they were not big enough to any for anything that I was working on that I needed to frame. I would need a much bigger piece. So I used those to make the dividers in those in there so I had uh, four or five columns worth of floss bags in there. So yeah, I didn't want to be carrying that back and forth between over here in the sun porch and the living room. So yeah, this was an awesome, awesome option. So check it out, see what you think. and. You can mention my name that I sent you. <laughs> okay. All right. Up to you. Up to you. So those are my two products that I have to review today. So we did all of that. Now, I don't know if I want to go into all of this or not. But let's see. We have a couple. We have... A little bit of time before we hit an hour so I will I will do this I was on a on a live stream the other day and we were talking about floss tube and subscribers to floss tube and all of that but before I say that first I'd like to say that it is extremely fabulous, absolutely fabulous, that there are so many younger people picking up cross stitch, doing YouTube channels. It is wonderful. It does my heart good to see a lot of younger people stitching because you know, there was a time not too terribly long ago where the majority of stitchers were people my age. But now you're seeing more and more stitchers that are younger, uh, some in their 20s, some in their 30s, some in their 40s. But I, th I think it's because there are so many more options out there in designs. And there's so many more things out there that younger people would want to stitch. You know, I see now personally for me, I would go, oh, I would never want to stitch that. But I see a lot of younger stitchers stitching that big Pokemon thing or Pokemon thing. I would not want to stitch that because, of course, that's not my do. And, you know, I'm an older stitcher. But these younger girls and guys love that stuff. If it's related to video games or if it's dragons or you name the thousands of things that are out there that younger people are loving to stitch. And it's wonderful, wonderful that 
this is being passed on to the younger generation because you know really that's what my channel is all about is is sharing what i know with tips and different techniques so that they can be passed on to younger people because face it i'm not going to be around forever I'm not going to be around forever um i hope i have a few more good years in me to pass on what i know and that would be wonderful and you know hope that some of the younger people pick up on the tips and tricks that i have to offer and the techniques and all of that stuff so that's what I'd like to say first, that it is just a wonderful thing that younger people are stitching today. And it's great, absolutely great, that there are so many younger people doing floss tube channels. But that segues into my next question, my wonderment. And we were also talking about that on this stream that I was listening to. Pardon me, but I really needed a drink. <laughs> but one of the questions that came up is, why is it? Why is it that there are new YouTubers out there and some people get a whole lot of subscribers right off the bat, right off the bat. And others don't. And yes, I'm sure it has to do with uh, the algorithms that YouTube uses. And I don't understand all of that. Personally, I make these because I like to make them and I like to share what I know with all of you. But that question does come up. What makes, why is it that some people get a lot of viewers right off the bat. Okay. I mean, and just to mention a few, it's Darcy. Darcy gets video or got subscribers like there was no tomorrow. And he is, he is a, you know, he isn't for everybody, but a lot of people watch him. A lot of people love him. I watch him. I think he's a hoot, but he's different. He's different. And the other one that I can think of right off the top of my head is Chris Cross Stitch. He got lots of viewers right out of the gate. His videos are a little different. He has more things other than stitching. But did that happen because people accidentally found him? Or did that happen because a lot of other YouTubers that have maybe been around for a while shouted him out? And is it those shout outs that make or help new YouTubers getting a whole lot of views right out of the gate? Not everybody's YouTube is for everybody. You know, I think Chris and Darcy are uniquely different from a lot of YouTubers out there. They do uniquely different things and they've made their, for lack of a better way to do it, they've made their brand. You know, Darcy's a hoot. I don't know if you watch me, Darcy, but I love your videos. And as soon as I see them posted, I watch it. Chris, same way. I know you watch mine because you've been on my lives. <laughs> But as soon as I see your video on a Tuesday, I watch it. So they are uniquely different. But then my question becomes to people, for those that aren't necessarily uniquely different, what is it that makes you click on someone's video? I'm curious. I, I really am curious. I mean, and for example, what made you click on mine? Was it the thumbnail that I used? I mean, for a long time there, I was using my needle bug thumbnail. And lately, I decided to switch that up a little bit. Was it because someone somewhere shouted me out? 
And I didn't always hear about who shouted me out, but if you were one that did, thank you. I probably never thanked you because I didn't really know. Um, personally, I'm surprised at the number of viewers I have. I never would have dreamed that. Uh, but what made you click? What made you click? What made you see that video and click on it and then subscribe? What was it? Or was it the title? Was it the title? I know I've, I've done some unique titles here of late, like how many stitches can we stitch in an hour? Or are you up for a challenge? Is it things like that that make you want to click on a video and then watch it? I'm just curious. I, I really am just curious. Um, and what makes you you continue watching? What do you like to see in a video? Well, that was part of the conversation too, is a lot of YouTubers, and this is no judgment, absolutely no judgment. This is just information and wonderment. A lot of YouTubers do the standard YouTube expectation. Like I started out today. These are my works in progress. Finishes. Yeah, right. I'm going to have a finish. Ain't that happening anytime soon. Um, but is it seeing going through that, that um, for lack of a better way to put it, expected agenda? Is it saying, I have these works in progress. I have these finishes. I have this life update. Um, is that what you like to see in a video? Or do you like a stitch with me? And if you like a stitch with me, do you like stitch with me's where people just talk about, like I do, rambling? <laughs> rambling. Throw in some tips every now and again because you never know quite what you're going to get if I do a stitch with me video you I might be stitching along and something's gonna pop in in this head and say hmm that's a tip I really should share so let's talk about that a little bit during the stream um, and, and just to back up a little bit do you watch the video because you're interested in what people are stitching or because you like that person. I think for me, it has to be the combination. I like what they're stitching, but I also like that person and I like how they come across and I like how they try and involve you and make you feel part of their community, part of, of why they do this. So, you know, what, what is it about that that makes you want to watch them? I'm a kind of person of what you see is what you get. And I hope that you feel um, drawn in. I hope that I'm making you all feel welcome and you know, you're, you're part of, hey, let's sit down and, and talk a little bit today. Let's sit down and have that cup of coffee or, or stitch with me for a little while. Let's see what we can do in an hour and talk about everything and anything. You know, what draws you? What draws you in? What, why do you want to watch? And lastly, Which format, I, I did talk about this a little bit, but which format do you like the best? Do you like that standard floss tube format the best? Do you like a stitch with me the best? Or even do you like a live, a live session versus a pre-recorded session? I've noticed that on my channel, frequently 
my pre-recorded videos do a bit better than my live sessions. So not only is this information just because I'm curious, because I really am curious, and I'm always kind of looking to say, to see how can we do this? How can we do this better? How can I do this better? How can I make you feel part of my family and part of my channel? Because I want it to be engaging. For me to do a live video, that feeling was I can engage with you. I can speak with you. We can have a conversation back and forth. We can't do that as much on a pre-recorded video. However, we can visit together on a pre-recorded video. And I had an interesting comment on my, it was a video or two ago. I can't remember exactly which one. It might have been a Stitch With Me video that I did not too long ago. And the comment was, I really like when you do these as a pre-recorded because then I feel like I have you all to myself and we're sitting and stitching together. And I thought, well, that is just really nice. And that said to me, hey, you did a, you did a good thing there. And that's what I would like. That's what, that's what my goal is for this channel to, you know, to interact one way or another. So I would really, really appreciate in the comments if, if you could help me out with some of those things, just A, for curiosity's sake, and B, how can we do this? How can we do this better? How can we we make these videos enjoyable for all of you. Like I said, I am who I am. What you see is what you're going to get. I am not going to try and, and advocate for something that I don't like, like the lamp, like the floss, uh, floss book. I love them. I'm not going to tell you, I would not be sitting here telling you about them if I didn't love them. If I didn't like that lamp, it would have gone back. I would have returned it. If I didn't like the floss books, I'm not going to sit here and tell you how great they are or how great I think they are for me. If I like it for me, it not may not necessarily be for everybody. But I put it out there in case it is something that you like. In fact, how long ago was it that I did the videos on the Nurge? The Nurge hoops, the Nurge stands. I am still today hearing from people that I finally ordered one, Karen. I couldn't wait to tell you. I ordered a Nurge stand and I love it. That's what makes me feel good. That's what makes me happy. So, off the soapbox now. <laughs> now, I ran this video for an hour and I did not intend to do that, but we all know me. One last thing before I go, and we're, we're talking about new YouTubers. There are a lot of people out there who are, since it's 2022, they are picking 22 of their favorite floss tube channels to watch. Well, I'm going to do just a little bit of a take on that. I decided that I want to do 22 YouTubers that I found in no particular order that are under a thousand subscribers. And what can we as a community do to help them reach that 1,000? You know, they're the under 1,000 club. <laughs> so I thought I would list 22 and I will put them in the drop down box. I'm just going to put the names. I don't necessarily have the links, but you can search them on YouTube just like you would any other one. So I'm going to just read through my list of 22 under a thousand subscriber YouTubers that I randomly picked 
from people that I subscribe to or people that I've seen under my recommendations. So they are Gemma Stitches, Burn Stitches, Kaylee Cross Stitch, Hooking and Stitching, Mom Stitcher, Allen Gator Stitcher, Stay at Home Stitcher, Stitch With Me Daily, Stitchy Me, Sycamore Stitches, The Steadfast Stitcher, Tracy's Craft House, Ala Alara, I think that's how you say her name, and if I'm not pronouncing it right, Alara, please correct me. <laughs> Ali Juno's Crafty Corner, A Million Tiny Stars, Busy Hands, Coco Creates, James the PH Stitcher, Kristen Smith, Star Parade, Stitch Ilanka, and Cessnock Stitcher. So those are my 22 under 1,000 subscribers that check them out. See if you like them. Uh, quite a few of them, I will say, are full coverage stitchers just like me because that's what I tend to stitch and gravitate towards. So there may be some out there that are of interest to you. But let's subscribe. Get them up over a thousand. Give them a like. Give them the encouragement to continue to do these floss tube videos. Many young people. We need the young people to take the places of us old guys. <laughs> I speak for myself. <laughs> okay. But we need to encourage them. We need to bring them under our wings and, and move them along in the floss tube floss tube world and the cross stitch world um, and hopefully they are enjoying this craft just as much as we do and will continue to make the videos so that's my 22 under a thousand subscriber list and with that my friends i am going to call this a day and i will see you hopefully very soon with a stitch with me. So take care, be kind, stitch happy, and I will see you next time.